Green entrepreneur Robin Poe is a man familiar with life pivots. Since graduating from university in 2004, he's had careers in three different fields. I first started my career in banking, and I would say back then it was more about financial performance. Then when I left banking and went into the family business, uh, it was a lot more about manpower supply for the oil and gas industry. Today, Robin is the founder of Right People Renewable Energy. The business helps clients make the switch from fossil fuels to clean energy. It specializes in helping communities in off-grid locations. We really have to look at the triple bottom line of people, planet, profit. And I think uh, that's really how we measure ourselves today. The aim of making a positive impact while running a viable business is one of the fastest growing investment themes as the world grapples with climate change and its challenges. Last year, investors put over 51 billion US dollars into environmental, social and governance or ESG funds. That's a record amount and double the funds invested a year ago. By 2030, it's estimated that the ESG investment category will hit 1 trillion US dollars. Green is definitely the new gold. We've got another 10 or 15 years of transformation happening. Um, it's, it's right now essential to get the best talent in place because the clock is ticking. Around the world, demand for ESG talent is growing across sectors but the need is especially acute in Asia. According to a recent survey, more than 40% of institutional investors in Asia say they're being held back from more ESG investing because of a shortage of trained staff. That's a significant increase from last year. In Asia, the talent pool is not as large or well-formed as it is in the early adopting regions like the UK and Europe. The other challenges we are facing is that banking is now competing with other industries for this finite talent pool. It's probably, in our opinion, the biggest single opportunity since digital transformation. Uh, but to do this and to do this right, you need a leadership set um, to understand what's at stake and then embrace these changes, uh, demonstrate to the rest of the organization that it's real and you're taking it seriously. Earlier this year, the big four accounting firm PwC unveiled a 12 billion US dollar plan to create 100,000 net new jobs in ESG by 2026. That's a third of its current workforce. So what does it take to make the cut for such ESG jobs? Historically, ESG has very much been exclusively about science, so it really required professionals uh, who are very analytical. However, to be a professional really needs you know, a blend of skills, right, including ESG acumen, business modeling, and a broad knowledge of sustainable products. But just as important are the soft skills to help stakeholders on this journey. We're really looking for professionals who are agile in their thinking uh, and can quickly absorb information in this fast-moving space. So people who can prioritize, because you will be inundated with requests, as this is probably one of the most in-demand functions. Uh, we will need strong communicators as this continues to be a learning space for everyone and you will need to bring others along. We also need people who have empathy to different perspectives and motivations from public sector, colleagues, customers and NGOs. This means that banks will widen their recruitment horizons to other professional backgrounds such as urbanists, teachers, journalists, corporate communications who all fit these attributes. A recent survey of investment professionals on LinkedIn found that less than 1% disclosed sustainability-related expertise on their profile. At the same time, 6% of jobs posted were seeking sustainability-related skills. But universities are responding to this mismatch of supply and demand. In Singapore, there are three research centres that work on green finance with an Asian focus. The latest is the new Sustainable and Green Finance Institute, which will be fully operational by the end of the year. ESG right now is a luxury and has been for many years. And hence, corporations thought of this as a cost center. So they did not really invest in it. But now that the regulators, investors, and also the banking sector are really requiring corporations 
to be responsible socially, environmentally, and for governance. Hence, corporations are realizing that this is a necessary cost that they have to incur, which means they want talent, which means they are asking universities and other players to nurture talent that they can hire to satisfy these requirements. A key research focus will be to measure and assess sustainability and its impact. This will help companies to put a monetary value on environmental and social performance. All with the common aim of building capabilities and expertise to support the future of green finance. Environmental and social and governance issues, they are here to stay if we lay the groundwork correctly in terms of providing the right education level, training to the people who are on the regulatory side, but also on the corporate side, I think we will have a chance to make the environment or the planet sustainable in the long run. If you have an authentic passion about ESG, and there is a world of opportunity, not just for you, but also for our clients, a hugely important area where we are focused on, and especially for Singapore, as we head towards our Green Plan 2030.